Have you ever wondered why some of your content gets traffic from Google while others get nothing? Because you go to the effort of writing new articles, but then time passes and there's just no impact and it sucks. So how can you change this? Simple. You can use the exact same system I've been using and refining over the last 10 years for my own content, as well as for my work as head of content for a platform with over 480,000 members. In this video, I'll show you why Google is ignoring you, how to get its attention, why small wins make for landslide results, and how to set this all up easier than ever, thanks to ChatGPT, some next level prompts. So let's start off by showing you how to finally get Google's traffic and attention. Have you ever been chatting with a friend and they just can't seem to follow along with what you're telling them? The conversation is fairly straightforward and yet they just shrug their shoulders and have no idea what you're talking about. It's almost like you're speaking a foreign language, so you have to break it down bit by bit until suddenly they're like, aha. Google is kind of like that friend in that it doesn't always know what your content is about, so it doesn't know when to recommend you to people, and it's one of the major reasons why your content sometimes isn't working. The good news is that there's a solution, and that's where on-page SEO comes in. It sounds complex, but it's basically just ticking a few boxes on your page to make sure that Google finally figures it out. Lists are good. Lists are good. Lists are good. We pick a keyword that describes our article topic, add it to the right places, and boom, Google now knows when to recommend you for when people search for certain things. The good news is most of us can be done fairly quickly, especially with AI. However, we do need to be strategic about the keywords that we choose for our article. Otherwise, we might be tagged for the right things, but be far, far down the list of recommendations so that no one ever visits us. So how can we pick a keyword that describes our page but not be lost on page 50 of their search results? The answer is Mark Wahlberg. What do I mean? Well, every keyword is different. Some of them are smaller with less traffic, while others are incredibly popular with a lot of competition. They're kind of like Tom Hanks in the 90s. Well done! Well done! If you put him in your film, you're going to get thousands of people coming to watch. However, you'll also need $50 million for him to be in it. Most movie studios can't afford Tom Hanks' fee, so they have to be smarter about who their lead actor is. This way they can get a fairly popular actor like Marky Mark Wahlberg, but also get it released and make money from it. They do enough of these over time, and they also make millions just not in one go. So you don't need the big ones, you need lots of small ones. You need to be as smart with your keyword choices as these movie studios. We want to find one that fits your article, but you also have chance of appearing for. So it's something less competitive, but it can drive traffic almost immediately and continue to for months and years after. Most people miss this strategy, but as a small blog, it's far better to have a page that gets 100 visits a month every month rather than try and target a term with thousands of searches that you will never rank for and so never sends a single visitor. Do this enough times and it all adds up. All right, so let's get into this and I'll show you how to find these less competitive keywords for your own page. Step one is to figure out your current level. First off, we need to check how strong your website is in an SEO tool like Ahrefs. This is a paid tool, but their cheapest option is fine for what you need at around $25. They may even offer a free trial. I've not checked it in a while. You can always grab it for a month and cancel it. So go ahead and add your website in the Site Explorer option. Once it loads, you'll see the main rank score here, which goes from 0 to 100. This number is just a rough guide to your site's current power level based on how many sites are linking to you and how powerful those sites are. Don't worry if your site isn't too high just yet, as I'll show you how to raise this ranking later on. For now though, we want to know this current number as it gives us a rough idea of the kind of keywords you can rank for. As a rule of thumb, we can target anything that's a smaller number than us, and then around a maximum of five levels above. Any higher than that, we would need to be building a lot of links to get traffic. For example, if your site was a DR30, we could rank for anything from 1 to 30, and then up to 35 with a little extra work. Once you've checked out your site and seen how strong it is, go ahead and enter your article topic in the Keyword Explorer section. This will then tell you some information about this potential keyword, such as how competitive it is and how much traffic it gets. Now, there's a few areas we want to look at on this page, so don't just focus on the difficulty score. Instead, make sure to scroll down the page and take a look at the page's ranking in the top 10 results, as this is the first page of Google and it's where we want to be. What we're looking for here is if there's a page ranking for this keyword that has a similar domain rank to yours or lower. This way, we'll know if you can rank for this also if you chose that. Term. This happens quite a lot. You'll have a lot of large blogs in the top results and then sometimes one or two smaller sites also ranking next to them, so there is opportunities. However, if all the sites are larger, don't worry, we can also check for variations on the term and other options that might be easier to target. So let me break this down with an example. I recently wrote a guide on how to improve website loading speed. Basically, if a website takes four seconds to appear on screen, it can lose almost half of its audience. They just get bored waiting for it to load and leave. It sucks because in your analytics, it looks like you're maybe getting a thousand clicks, but in reality, you're getting 500 instead. What's crazier is that the fix for this is fairly simple, and once you do it, you're pretty much doubling your traffic. Anyway, I have an article on this, and I want to optimize it so that it ranks. 
However, when I search for the broader topic term of improved website speed, this is incredibly competitive with a difficulty ranking of 79 out of 100. However, like I said, if I scroll down the page, I can see that one of the sites in the top 10 for this is only a DR58. My blog is around DR50 right now, as I've been focusing on client work for the past few years, so it's almost in range that I can compete with, especially if I did some link building. Better still, if we look closer at this small blog that's ranking, we can see that it only has one backlink. In theory, I could target this keyword and get on this list. However, let's see if there's any better options that are possibly easier and where I could get traffic even quicker. So if we scroll back up and click on keyword ideas, we can look at options that are similar to these, but with lower competition. So here we can see that improved WordPress site speed is an easier option. And I actually reference a lot of WordPress in the article, so it would be a great fit. There's also a possibly even better option in how to improve your website speed that's a DR zero to rank for. This means that it should rank almost immediately if I optimize for this term. Yes, it gets less traffic with just 70 searches a month, but here's the thing. The traffic estimates in these tools are usually much lower than the reality. I've seen keywords that have zero estimated traffic actually get hundreds of searches per month. Not only that, but remember, it's better to target a term that you can send immediate traffic to now because it's less competitive instead of waiting six, 12 or 18 months or longer for a term that sends nothing in the meantime. So now that we have a term to target, let's start optimizing our page for this keyword. All we're doing is adding the keyword we've chosen to our page in certain locations. This way Google will understand the topic of the page. So we want to add it to all of these locations. In the URL for that page, in the main h1 title, so that's the headline at the top of the page, in the first 150 words, in the header image alt text, in an h2 heading, a few times during the post, in the final 150 words, in the meta description and meta title. Again, don't worry if that all seems complex. We're only going to do two of these manually and the rest we can do with AI. Better still, the two that we do manually are super simple, so let's walk through them. So adding the keyword to the URL. All we need to do here is make sure that we have our focus keyword in the URL of the page. Ideally though, we want it to be front loaded so that the focus keyword is at the start of the URL. This is because by adding the focus keyword at the start, we're highlighting to Google that this is the focus of the page. So for example, if we take my article that we're optimizing, the keyword I decided to target is how to speed up your WordPress site. So that needs to be front loaded. So uh, my website at mycontent.com slash how to speed up your WordPress site. I could have made the URL slightly longer and added something like beginner's guide to make it more appealing to click on, which is fine, just as long as that keyword is at the front and not at the back of the term. So for example, how to speed up your WordPress site beginner's guide would be fine. Beginner's guide to speeding up your WordPress site wouldn't be because we're pushing that focus term further down the URL. Super simple. All you've got to do is put this in your URL, click save, we're good to go. So that's the first manual task done. Here's the second. We're gonna add the keyword to our header image alt tag. So this is the image that's always at the top of the page, usually the first thing that you've got coming up. All we need to do is save that image as the focus keyword name and then also add it in the alt tag like so. This again will signal to Google that the article is about this topic and it's the very first image so it must be important and the article must be about the topic. Don't skip this. Google's getting better at recognizing images but let's make sure we don't miss a really easy win. So add the alt text, click save, and we're done. All right, for the remaining locations, we're gonna use AI to do them for us. If you want a copy of the prompts used in this video so that you can just copy and paste and use them yourself, click the link in the description below and I'll email them to you. So a few things on the AI. We're gonna be using ChatGPT for this. In theory, I suppose this prompt could work with other tools, but this is just what I use daily and I've tested hundreds and thousands of times. Also, once you're in ChatGPT, I recommend you turn it onto GPT-4 if you can. This is because um, 4.0 version is far better than the standard version at understanding complex tasks. It is paid, but it's only $20 a month. That being said, this prompt can still work with the free version. You just might need to tweak the results a little more when we get to the refining in a second. So here's how this works. We start off by entering the prompt into a tool to tell it what we want it to do. You'll notice that the prompt is actually a sequence of tasks with some additional guidelines of how we want it to act and work with us. Then we copy and paste our article draft and hit enter. The prompt will then ask you to fill the focus keyword that you're targeting. Once you've entered that, it will go ahead and add your keyword to all the locations you need it to. However, pay attention because this is important. As a rule of thumb, we always wanna write for people first and then try and hit SEO requirements later if possible. What I mean by this is, as good as these tools are, they're not perfect. They might add your keyword in a way that looks weird or doesn't make sense from a sentence structure. It's getting better every day and I've not had problems with it for literally months, but 
one of the common issues with AI is when people don't moderate it and they just let it do whatever and then they let stuff go live without checking. So you have to see what it's adding. The good news, however, is that because of the way that this prompt is set up, the tool will work through these locations one by one and show you what it's changed and how it's added the keyword each time. This way you can double check if it all looks okay as you go before you lock them in or even ask it to make any new changes. It's pretty handy, right? If you think this is cool, I actually have a whole series of prompts like this that help assist me in writing content daily. Basically, I took the same research, writing, editing, optimization process, copywriting process that I've used to write content for the last decade for myself. But then I sped it up by using AI to assist me with all the time consuming tasks. So what used to take me eight hours can now take 90 minutes or less. Better still, because it's working alongside me instead of doing it all on its own. It passes all plagiarism issues and it creates a quality of content that I would normally hit or better, but with far less effort. Basically, it's still me writing. I just have this awesome AI intern that's helping me out. Even better though, I'm not paying hundreds of dollars per month for specialist AI writing tools. I'm just paying $20 a month for ChatGPT and then using these prompts. I pinned a link to this process in the top comment below if you want to check this out. But anyway, back to the edits. There's just one last optimization we need to do and it can make a huge difference in our clicks even if we're not ranking first in Google. Better still, we can also do this task with AI. All right, so meta titles and meta descriptions. They're another thing that sounds complex, but it's just a nerdy way of saying what title and what description do you want to show up in the search engines when your page is recommended. So for example, if we look at my target keyword again, we can see the sites that are currently ranking for it. The meta title is the line of text that appears at the top of the result, while the meta description is a sentence of text that appears below that title. The goal of these is to help people understand your page and get them to want to click on you versus the other options. A good description can actually get more clicks, while a bad description can actually lose you clicks. More importantly, we always want to write these ourselves and add it to our article because if we don't, Google just adds a random title and description. So here you can see that the top result for this search term hasn't optimized this at all. Google's just pulled a bunch of the headings off that page and it doesn't really look very appealing to click on. In fact, I would bet money that the second rank page gets a lot more traffic than it should be getting right now and it's probably pulling clicks away from the top result. This is why we need to write these. The problem, of course, is that if you just finish writing and optimizing your article, your brain is probably pretty fried and not going to be at its sharpest no matter how much coffee you feed it. The good news is that we can use another prompt to write this. So with the current version of the article still uploaded in the tool, use this new prompt. I need to write a title and meta description for this article. The title can't be more than 64 characters long. The meta description can't be longer than 159 characters. It should reach out to the ideal reader, address the problem and tell them what they'll learn and get them intrigued to want to click. Let's create four variations and use the focus keyword in the meta description and in the meta title. Ask me what the focus keyword is before starting. Add that and click enter. It's important that you still have the article open in the prompt window from before as it will then read your article for context and figure out what to write for you. Then it'll give you four different titles and descriptions. Simply pick one you like, mix and match or ask for other alternatives. Once you find a winner, you can add it to your article. Normally you have a section for this in WordPress or any other platform you use like so. And boom, you now have a fully optimized page that Google can understand and start recommending you for. However, there's still one more problem we need to deal with. You see, if you want to make sure that you're the first option that Google recommends and you get the majority of search traffic, you're going to need to start building backlinks to these pages, especially if you want to target some more competitive keywords. So watch this video next where I share my most powerful link building technique that anyone can use. It's perfect for small businesses and one person teams because it focuses on getting you insanely powerful links for very little time commitment. In fact, it's the exact same technique that I use to get 70 backlinks from some of the biggest websites in my industry, all in just 90 days, as a one person blog. No joke, but this technique took me from DR0 to DR50 in three months, something that most websites take years to achieve. So definitely don't miss this and go watch it now.